Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are taking a GeForce 3 Ti 200, which is fairly affordable, and we're gonna mod it into a GeForce 3 Ti 500. I am not 100% sure if the card will handle the higher clocks, but we're gonna find out. It certainly handles the higher clocks of the GeForce 3, so at least you are guaranteed to get that sort of speed boost, but I'm not sure if it can do the GeForce 3 Ti 500. In terms of components, we definitely have to modify the cooling. I'm gonna mod a cooler onto it. I'm also gonna use a PCI video card. This is the safest way to uh, flash the BIOS. And if anything goes wrong, you can just boot off the PCI video card and flash back the original BIOS. This is optional, it's a USB floppy drive. I'm gonna use a modern Windows 10 machine to create a boot disk and put the NV flash files on there. You gotta have the right card to actually do this mod and a lot depends on the memory. Now this video card is from Electromine. Now, the purchase links are down below in the description and there's a 20% discount voucher you can use. The memory has a speed rating of four nanoseconds which gives it a rated speed of 250 megahertz and because it's DDR memory that gives us an effective speed of 500 megahertz which is exactly the memory speed of the GeForce 3 Ti 500. My usual method for putting a fan onto a video card is using screws. However, the gaps uh, on this cooler, they're too wide so the screws actually don't hold. So we gotta come up with something different. Also, this video card doesn't have a fan header to connect the fan. You could um, solder one onto here, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, but this is the right spot. I looked at the other GeForce cards and it's around here. So we're basically just gonna connect this to the motherboard header, which has a fan header very close nearby. So first we gotta figure out which way the air blows. Most of the time the coolers have a little marking on here, this one does not. Um, so I hooked it up to the motherboard and just tested it. The air basically comes out this way, so we're gonna mount the cooler onto like that. Now in the, the way I'm gonna mount that cooler is by basically putting screws for these two holes and then um, just mount, uh, screwing them down that way and that should be able to hold. Okay, we're good to go. So I'm just gonna hold this nice and firm and start screwing in these. It's trying to run away from you, so you just gotta hold it down with a bit of force, but otherwise we are done. That's strong enough, so there you go. So basically, this is how we uh, install the screws. They just hold the fan in place on the edges, and that's all nice and secure and we're gonna insert the card this way. The cable will go underneath here and plug it into the motherboard and we are good to go. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do first is create our bootable floppy disk. Head to bootdisk.com and download uh, one of these links here, driver free disk for BIOS flashing. Once you've done that, just run the executable, put a floppy disk into your floppy drive and this will write uh, the floppy, the bootable floppy image onto your floppy disk. Okay, that's all done. Now we just gotta copy these files onto the disk. So this is NV flash and this is the BIOS for the GeForce 3 Ti 500. So I'm just gonna go send to uh, floppy disk and I will make these files available on my website. Check, a, check down below in the description for uh, details and a link. Okay, that's it, we're done. So I'm gonna eject the floppy disk and switch over to the retro PC. Okay, here we are in the BIOS of the retro PC. There's one setting that we need to double check and that has to do with the video card. It says here primary graphics adapter. You've got a choice between HEP and PCI. At the moment, both cards are installed. I've got the PCI card, which is a GeForce uh, 6200 and we've got our uh, Medium GeForce 3 Ti 200. Make sure this is set to PCI and change the boot order so it boots from the floppy. Okay, here we are on the boot floppy. Let's have a look at all our files. So we're gonna run NV flash with the dash A command. That will display a list of all the NVIDIA cards in the system. So here we can see our two cards with the index zero, that's our GeForce 3 Ti 200. And with the index one, this is the GeForce 6200. And on the right side, you can see that the first card uses the AGP interface and the second card is for the PCI. So the first thing we're gonna do is back up the existing BIOS just in case something goes wrong. So NV flash and then dash B for backup. And we're just gonna call it uh, 
median ti 200.rom. So it's asking us which card do we want to back up. So index zero. Okay, that's all done. Now we can flash the GeForce 3 TI 500 bytes onto our card. So the command is nv flash without any options. And then uh, the file is GeForce 3 TI 500 dot rom. So here the program is confused. It tries to match the bars in the file with the video card. So we have to be a bit more specific. So let's try NVIDIA flash dash um, I for index. So zero and then followed by the file GeForce 3 TI 500 dot ROM. Okay, so now we're getting a different error. It now says there's a mismatch between the uh, board PCI device ID and what's in the BIOS. So we got to be even more specific. We got to put in an override. So the options are dash uh, five and dash six and GeForce 3 TI 500.rom. That basically forces the flash to ignore what the PCI device IDs are. Okay, so that's looking good. It's just asking for a final confirmation. Let's press Y and it's flashing the BIOS right now. Okay, that's all done. BIOS flash successful. Next, I'm gonna shut down the computer, remove the PCI card, and we're gonna boot from our brand new GeForce 4 ATI 500. Okay guys, here we are on the desktop. The resolution is 1024 by 768. Now the GeForce 3 still identifies itself as a TI200 and that is because of the PCI device ID. It's not actually stored in the BIOS. A lot of people believe flashing the card will uh, change the PCI device ID. It does not. There's another chip on the card um, and it uses some resistors that you can desolder and change around to change the device ID, but there's very little documentation exactly what those resistors are. However, the clock speeds and the memory timings are all uh, dialed in, just like on a proper GeForce 3 Ti 500. So we've got 240 megahertz on the core and 250 megahertz on the memory clock, which because it's DDR memory, which gives us 500 megahertz effective clock speed. So next up, we're just gonna run some 3D mark and see if the uh, if this mod was actually successful and stable. So unfortunately this video card couldn't handle the TI500 clocks. Um, yep, it just lost the video signal. But the next thing we can do is just flash the regular GeForce 3 BIOS and hopefully that works and we're getting a little bit of a speed boost. Okay, so we flashed the regular GeForce 3 BIOS. Let's restart the machine and see if this one is stable. Okay, we are back on the retro PC here, the clock speed. So we've got 200 megahertz for the core and 460 megahertz for the memory, which is exactly what the GeForce 3, the regular GeForce 3 has. So there you go, that looks a lot better. This has been running for an hour now and I haven't had any issues so far. So it looks like we can flash the regular GeForce 3 BIOS just fine. However, the clock speeds for the DI500 are a little bit out of reach for this card. So I just want to find out what the actual issue was, if it was the memory or the uh, core clock. So I'm just going to overclock the memory to 500 of the TI500 and run 3 Mark and see what happens in regards to stability. So this is what memory looks like that's overclocked beyond what it can do, which is uh, unfortunate. The rating does say it should run at 500 megahertz, uh, but it doesn't. So maybe there's more to it. Maybe the voltage is not high enough or the memory timings are off. So you might have better luck maybe trying another BIOS from another card and seeing if that works. So I just want to increase the clock speed uh, to match the one of the TI 500 while leaving the memory uh, to the default settings of the GeForce 3. So this has been running for a while. So the chip runs at the clock speed of the GeForce 3 Ti 500 and looks like the fan is doing a good job. So the GPU definitely can handle the higher clock speeds. So it is an issue with the memory. So there you have it guys. To answer the question, could we mod this GeForce 3 Ti 200 into a Ti 500? Not quite. The uh, GPU actually was quite overclockable and was happily 
running at the clock speeds of the GeForce RTI 500. However, the memory let us down a little bit. Uh, it did go all the way up to a regular GeForce 3, so we're getting the performance somewhere in between a GeForce 3 and the TI 500, which is not a bad result at all. So that's it for this video, guys. Let me know down below what do you think uh, and share your experiences with uh, flashing and modding uh, GeForce cards. Um, yeah, what was your biggest overclock, for example, or what was your mod that really stood out? And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I shall see you soon with another video.